Hello everyone, this is Phil from AndrewCage.com. Welcome back to the show. Today we got Galaxy Note Pro. That's a 12.2 inch of the tablet device. That's massive tablet. Basically, it's the same as this guy. It's a Galaxy, Tab 20, uh, Galaxy Note 10.1 for 10 edition. It's got almost the same specs with it and a bigger form factor. I've been wondering what is the point of making it bigger when it's big enough. So um, let's deal with um, what's the point is, it starts with the Samsung logo on the top with the proximity sensor and the ambient sensor and the front facing camera and the 12.2 inch of a massive 25, uh, 2560 by 1600 display. It's an, it's, this guy's an LCD with the Pentel layout, we'll deal with that. It does have its problem. And under that is a multitasking key, home key and a back key. Uh, they finally gone uh, through away that menu key. It was a legacy key and aside from that, it wasn't exactly a nice touch when you want to hold tablet in this kind of manner. But since Galaxy, Tab, Galaxy Note Pro is too big to be held in the hand like that, maybe uh, it's uh, not as bad as a choice as it was in a smaller tablet, but I still don't like it. I would have preferred a soft key. But anyway, on the right is a S Pen is flagship feature. You can of course pull it off to use the uh, Wacom features. and. Um, it's got a stereo speaker, so one side of the speaker is located on there. There's a USB 3.0 port uh, for your faster data transfer. If you do not want to use or you can't use a USB 3.0, then you can plug in your legacy USB 2.0 devices on the right half of the port since it's backward compatible. It's got a micro SD card slot so you can expand up to 64 gigabytes if you are not uh, satisfied enough with the built-in storage of 32 gigabytes. On the top is a infrared port right there for your remote, remote controlling of your telly and there's a power key and the volume rocker on the top and on the left is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and another half of that stereo speaker is located on there. The quality of the speaker isn't exactly as great as I, as I expected on a big tablet but um, it's, it's, it's got a good enough of a sound quality. It's not bad, it's just that it doesn't have that awesome bass that iPad Air has. But um, hey, this guy's a really slim as hell, so um, maybe we should give it a break on that. There's an 8 megapixel camera on the back, and there's an LED flash. This guy actually takes um, one of the best uh, photos that I've seen on a tablet, so that's a, that's a good thing. You know, there, there are people who take photos with their tablets. And there's a Samsung logo and a lot of certification logos right there. And the back's got this stitched fake leather kind of finish. and. Um, Unlike on the Galaxy Note 10.1, because the most disappointing part of this guy, aside from the lag, uh, only on the outside was because it doesn't have the coats on it. It's just a pure plastic, and this guy is same as the Galaxy Note 3. This guy's got a soft finish, leather, rubberish finish on that. That's a good thing. Alrighty, enough with the outside, and let's get into the inside. It, this guy initially ships with the Android 4.4.2 KitKat. That's the latest Android that ships with the... Um, stock devices and um, let's take a look. There is a visual confirmation of the Android KitKat and um, and a little bit of a Easter egg right there. And um, aside from the fact that it does have the latest version, it does have a, a lot of changes in the visual factors. To start with, it's got a lot more neat icons. Let's compare it a bit with the Galaxy Note 10.1 uh, 2014 edition to make it more clear. Is that um, now, Icons are a lot cleaner. Well, some people might have seen this kind of styles of the icons, and I do agree, but um, having a cleaner icon is a, definitely a good thing because these were nowhere near being beautiful. And the notification, this usually fills up the whole screen, um, unlike it did with the, uh, the, the bar was always there. And also the notification bar right there is a lot cleaner. It does, it doesn't fill up the whole screen like the previous version of the Android did, a uh, previous version of the Samsung's Android did, and it only scrolls in the main center so you can see kind of uh, what was happening in the behind the notification bar. And the icons themselves are a lot cleaner and neat right there. I kind of like it. Uh, but these roundish icons do show the Pentel display uh, of its kind of a uh, glitches really apparent. So I don't usually talk about these pentals or the DPIs or whatever unless they're really terrible. And this guy really kind of annoys. Uh, let's start with the icon right here. It's got a little bit of a, it's not as smooth as I want it to be. And it becomes most noticeable when you go into um, to yellowish, reddish kind of pixels. So let's um, read this awesome developer's thread right there. And the orange letters 
have um, it, the color itself is not produced really well, and the I can kind of see the subpixels lacking right there. And that's uh, one of the few things that I really don't like about the Galaxy Note Pro. And um, let's get back to the interface. The TouchWish interface itself is not lagging at all. That's that's quite a surprise. TouchWish not lagging. It's finally happening. And um, they also added the magazine UX. It's, uh, Samsung has been very proud of this guy. And um, what you can do over here is and you can tap and hold on a magazine screen. And um, hey, 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 I can tap and hold on the magazine screen and it's going to let you adjust the size of the widgets right there. Yeah, so you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can kind of a... Uh, intrude the other widgets and sorts and you can add up more widgets so what you can do is there are numbers of topics over there so these are news widgets and the social widgets and applications and so on so you can add up a um, say photos and design oh it was already there stop bouncing and um, you can flip it through so this is basically a flipboard on your on your home screen and you can tap on an article that you're interested in and it's going to take you directly to the Flipboard app. Wi-Fi isn't working well. So you can, so it's going to take you to the, um, to the article and you can just flip it and continue reading. I'm not really a big fan of like news on your home screen kind of ideas. So I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm going to be using this, but um, this is working smoother than I thought. And um, if you're a news kind of guy, current event kind of guy, this could be helpful. It's just, I thought I should, had to deal with this guy so um alrighty and the multitasking has been uh has gone a lot better so previously multitasking when you tap and hold on the home key is going to take you to the multitasking and it filled up in the middle it was not only hard to control but it wasn't just efficiently using the screen you can scroll up to kill the apps and now it's on the bottom and you can scroll up to kill the apps and this is a lot cleaner to look and a lot easier to control. So that's one thing. And since this is this guy's called the Galaxy Note Pro, uh, I thought we have to deal with it with the in a professional kind of way. And we brought this Bluetooth keyboard. This guy came with the ThinkPad Tablet 2. I don't use that device anymore, but um, I do like the keyboard. <laughs> so you can pair up with the any kind of Bluetooth keyboard. So this is a keyboard plus mouse in the same guy. That's why I like it. And uh, as you pair it up, you can just like mount it onto the keyboard dock and use it like a laptop, a laptop with a bigger screen uh, than the keyboard. And there's a cursor appearing on right there. Uh, let's make it like that. So you can control the cursor and you cannot touch on the screen because um, this guy works as a home and uh, this guy has a back. So um, unless you really have to, you can just not touch the screen at all and work it, uh, use it as a, like a laptop. So what you could do right here is that it also comes with the Office Suite. Um, it's called the um, Han whatever. It comes with the H Word, H Show, H Cell, and these guys are pretty much like the desktop apps. Not only the layout, it doesn't look, look like any kind of your typical Android app. It does have. It does look like the PC ish a lot, and um, the um, shortcuts work as well. So you can type in whatever uh, under KG Galaxy Note Pro, and you can Control A that and you can control C that, and you can move into another cell, control V, and this is quite useful. And aside from that, the keyboard itself is really useful. The built-in soft key, I'm not really a big fan of a Samsung soft key, they're, they're usually terrible, but um, they made a lot of changes, and um, let's tap on twice, and um, these now include a arrow key and the control key, and this pretty much works as your desktop. And this, the greatest part about this, Having a big screen is that you rarely make typos on it. So let's say uh, you rarely, oh, I just did, rarely make type. I'm making a lot <laughs> typos on this big keyboard. So what I really liked about the iPad is that you rarely make typos on the iPad. For, I don't know about the others, but I, at least for me, I, lay, I make a lot less typo on the iPad than Air than I do on the Android tablets. And finally, I found a tablet that I do not make as much as the typos I, as I do on the other Android tablets. And I really like the soft keyboard. And say it again, I rarely like Samsung soft keyboards. And I like this one. So aside from that Office Suite, this guy's performance is pretty good. Uh, this, I, I rarely found any lags on this device. Let's 
take a look at the CPU-Z. It's got an Exynos octa-core. That's a big little architecture with the ARM core uh, A15 plus A7. That's a quad-core plus quad-core, so it's, uh, it gets more power efficient. Although, uh, despite the massive uh, battery built in inside, it doesn't, it didn't exactly stand as long as I want it to be, but it's got a 12.2 inch of a device, which is incredibly big considering the size and the thickness of this device. So as device this thick, the battery life is actually pretty much acceptable. It's just not awesome. So it's got an excellent Exynos octa-core with the three gigabytes of RAM and again, 32 gigabytes of storage. Uh, this guy is on Wi-Fi version, but the LTE and the 3G version is coming soon. Uh, so the performance wise, I, I didn't exactly find any problems with it. Alrighty, and the, all the nice features of the S Pen are right there. Uh, if you want to take a look at the more of the S Pen features, because I can't really deal with it because of the time frame, you guys are not going to watch like an hour long of a review. So tap on there to watch my Galaxy Note 3 review. I dealt with a lot of features right there. And um, overall, I really like the, this device. Not only the fact that it's just bigger, being bigger does make a difference. It's a lot easier to use and it's just better this way. I've had a huge uh, happiness with the whole visual that it provided. And um, trust me, I'm not usually this positive to the Samsung tablets and this guy really is doing well. And um, aside from the screen and the Pentel layout problems, the performance and the Samsung's uh, optimization on the, with the Android KitKat and the latest update is really good. I've rarely found any lags and the interface changes are really, really good. All right. Uh, let's get back to Nova Launcher so I can get back to my usual layout. The web surfing is really, really fast. And the, what I really liked about this big screen is that the multi-window right there is that, all right, so you have Chrome right there. And let's say um, you want a um, Google Maps on it. So I can split the screen in two and I can change the size and the ratio of it like this. Well, this is, you guys all seen this in the Galaxy Note sensors. So let's say um, I want a, um, that cell right there, so I can split into three, and you can scroll through the all the apps, um, scroll through all the apps that you have opened, and it barely lags, and that's a good thing. And I can add up one more app, so you can split it up to four apps. Let's uh, have Reddit right there to kill some time, and um, you can change the ratio on this guy, and you can be scrolling around these guys, and it doesn't lag. That's some, that's, that was pretty awesome. And this is really useful when you're just like, you know, rolling on your bed with your Galaxy Note Pro, killing some time, and I really like this. Alrighty, so with these guys, I think this guy definitely deserves to be called a Pro. What I would really want to see is to see Galaxy Note 10.1 edition, because it hasn't been long since this guy was launched. If this guy is going to be updated with Android 4.4.2 KitKat and all these nice, awesome features, I'd be really glad and see that Samsung has finally changed their strategy on tablet devices, uh, which is to launch a new one and have awesome features and just dish the old devices. And um, I'm that th satisfied with the Galaxy Note Pro. So um, I finally see some uh, point about um, using tablet as a um, contents making device instead of consuming it. So I definitely see some points on this guy. And if this guy uh, drops some prices or um, gets, uh, has more better speaker or better battery life, uh, and most importantly, have a better screen uh, instead of the Pentel layout, have more higher um, deep PPIs on it, I'd be really glad. But I'm still happy with the Galaxy Note Pro as it is right now. So um, that was Galaxy Note Pro. The verdict is that I like it and you will too, uh, probably. <laughs> Alrighty, so that was under KG and tap on there to subscribe to our channel to um, watch the reviews on the latest devices and we'll see you later. Thank you always for watching, bye.